Hi guys, this is Coach Ray from Voice of Armistling, and today we're going to talk about best pound for pound armistice in the history of the sport. A few years ago, a list of best pound for pound armistice was published on Armistice Only website. It was the idea of Thomas Wisniewski. He asked Engin Terzi and Eric Rosin to prepare the list. But such lists required the views of West and East, the eyes of yesterday and today. A list of top 10 made by armistling experts. In this video, we're going to talk about how this list came to be, who are these experts, who are the guys on the list, and why they are there. Please like the video right now, share it with your community, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, stay strong and love armistling. First, we need to understand what pound for pound means. People get it messed up all the time. They make comparisons with best guys in heavyweight or other weight classes. They talk about all-time best. They put the guys who are good now on the list without having longevity in the sport. Here Wikipedia comes in help. Pound for pound is a ranking used in combat sports, such as boxing, wrestling or mixed martial arts, of who the better fighters are relative to their weight, adjusted to compensate for weight class. I could even make this comparison in strength sports as well, like weightlifting and powerlifting. Armistling is a little bit harder, as there are no numbers to compare except placement in results of one athlete versus another. Pound for pound ability is most easily demonstrated through dominance within a weight class over extended period or extended periods of time. Strong performance in a class above a puller's weight adds credibility. So this is what we look at from this statement. Longevity. How long athlete has been dominating his class. Success. How successful he was at winning. Here we take into account not only how many titles athlete has but how good his competition was. Their armistling ability, technique, single move or well-roundedness. And most importantly, how good was athlete outside of his weight class. Yes, heavyweights are not favorites on pound for pound list, as to get there as a super heavyweight, they need to be very dominant and almost never give in to smaller opponents. So what you need to understand, the list wasn't made by me. The list was made by armistling experts. What does an expert in armistling mean? Here's an explanation from Armistice Only website regarding experts that made the list. Engin chose to ask people around the world of armistling, athletes, coaches, officials, and even expert level fans. These are experts who have been around the world level for over a quarter of a century, such as Andrew Cobra Rhodes, Niazi Kurt, Neil Pickup, Eric Lekuciani, Attila Ksabai, Marian Kaplan, Haider Gildil, Kazbek Zuluyev, Marcio Barboza, and many of these are multiple time world champion athletes. Also athletes and trainers who are near 20 years with the top of the world level pulling, such as Devon Larratt, Jan Samolinch, Krasimir Kostadino, Ivan Matyushenko, Vladimir Petrenko. Then arm wrestlers or an expert such as Eric Rosen, Kirill Bogdansky, Fabio Nemis, Tomas Wisniewski. These are not average fans whose views are made up by watching few online videos or seeing some competitions. These guys have invested most of their lives in the world of armistling. Their opinions are the ones that matter. Uh, I would say I agree with the list almost entirely. Positions can always change from everyone's perspective. And maybe top 20 list would include the guys who are still in conversation but haven't made it to the end list. But I agree 100% that everyone on that list deserves to be there and to be mentioned as the best pound for pound armistice of all time. So how list ended up of these 10 guys? Every expert sent in their top 10 for the list and the guys with most votes ended up on the top of the list. So you can check everything on armistice only website, link is in description. Global Armistice posted video of top 10, all this list. And I looked at the video and then I saw it has like 345 likes at that time and 52 dislikes. And I thought like, wow, I, I read some of the comments. I'm like, what's going on here? So I understand that most guys don't really understand who are these guys on the list and uh, they don't understand what pound for pound means. So uh, also they're new fans, most of them. So I wanted to make a video where we talk about the list and why these are the greatest pound for pound armistice in the history. I want to say huge thank you to Eric Rosen who sent me profiles of each armistice on the list. After the video hop onto Armistling Archives website. It's the biggest recorded collection 
of Armas Link history ever. Link is in description. So I think the video got most dislikes from Devon being number 10 on the list. He received 5 votes to get him on the top 10 list from 19 people who voted. Canada's Devon Laird won his fair share of major tournaments in the late 90s and early 2000s. But his ascent to the top of the right arm arm wrestling world gathered steam when he defeated Ron Bat in a super match in 2006. Over the next couple of years, he would enjoy a series of convincing super match victories, including over John Brzezank in September of 2008. This win earned him the world number one ranking, which he proceeded to protect by engaging and winning super matches against many of the top super heavyweights in the world, most of whom were much heavier than him. In 2012, he had a left hand Paul super match with Andre Pushkar, who was the world's number one ranked left hand. Puller. Despite Devon being a heavy underdog, he won by a score of 5 to 1 and became the first person in modern era to hold both rankings at the same time. While surgeries to both elbows slowed his progress during the middle of the decade, he still found tremendous success in 225 pound division of WL, winning a record 6 championship hammers between 2014 and 2017. Without a doubt, Devon is a great arm wrestler and he still has a time to climb the ladder and maybe in a few years be in a different place on that list. Number 9. Receiving 8 votes from the experts Andriy Pushkar Competing first in 110 kilo and later in a limited class, Ukraine's Andriy Pushkar won 15 senior division European titles and 12 senior titles at WAF World Championships between 2006 and 2013 before turning his attention solely towards professional tournaments. A dominant competitor with both arms, over a career that was tragically cut short, he won 16 Zloty Tour Nemirov titles, of which 9 were in absolute division. More than any other competitor in history. At the 2011 Nemirov Cup, he finished ahead of Denis Tiplenko at Travis Bajan to climb the world's number one left-hand ranking. He also won three A1 Russian absolute titles. His right arm defeat of Denis Tiplenko at the 2014 event, earning him the world's number one ranking with that arm. It's so tragic that his career was cut short and he had so much to work on with. And I think the landscape of heavyweights would have been much, much different if Andre was still around. Eight position with eight votes, Oleg Zhok. Ukraine's Oleg Zhok basically toyed with anyone in or near his weight class with his left arm every time he pulled from 2011 onwards. Between 2011 and 2018, he attended seven European Championships and won titles at all of them. He also attended the WAF World Championships every year during the same span of time and won eight titles in a row. At UIL4 in Las Vegas in 2013, he pulled in three of four weight classes, easily winning all three and then gave Devon Laird all he can handle in a super match. He won titles at every A1 Russian Open that was held, at every Zloty Tour held between 2010 and 2017. He won the absolute left-hand division at Lotoshino at least twice. And at the Moldova Open in 2018, he defeated Andrei Pushkar. Simply amazing. Oleg Zhok's career is the youngest out of everyone on this list. Despite his accident, if he gets back, continues dominating, the list will look 100% different very, very soon. No one was even near him in his class. And he was very, very close holding overall title. But um, I hope he gets back. I hope he recovers and continues to arm wrestle. Number 7. Jambul Vibliani. 8 votes. Jambul Vibliani, also known as Roman Tsindliani, is a Russian-Georgian puller who experienced tremendous success all over the world, be it at WAF World Championships or at many of the biggest pro tournaments in the United States. Between 2004 and 2009, competing in the 65 or 70 kilo classes, he won multiple major titles with both arms, including Nemirov, Ultimate Arm Wrestling League, Ruler of the Nation, Pack World Championships. These were the biggest money tournaments of the era. He also has won incredible 12 senior division buff during the same span, 6 years in a row with both arms. Jumble is amazing arm wrestler. Uh, like when he got into the Masters, so over 40 years old, he still competed in senior classes. I think he won Europeans and buff worlds. 
amazing athlete, one of the most dominant guys in 65, 60 kilo classes. Number six, with 13 votes, Rustam Babayev, no male puller, has won more senior division WAF world titles than Ukraine's Rustam Babayev. He won 20 of them in 80 and 85 kilo classes. 10 with each arm on 10 times he attended the tournament between 2002 and 2012. He also won 20 senior division European titles and 10 Zloty Tour titles. Despite weighing less than 90 kilo, he finished on the podium on absolute division at Zloty Tour on four occasions. People keep overlooking Rustam. They don't understand how great he is inside his weight class. Now he's battling giants. Everyone that has 30, 40, 50 kilos on him. And he still manages to win them. He still goes and wins overalls. He gives amazing matches. Now in top 8 in 95 kilo class, I think he will shine there and you will see. And a lot of people will change their perspective of Rustam Babayev. Everyone's just comparing him versus giant. And he's not a giant. Number 5. Andrew Cobra Rhodes. 13 votes. American Andrew Cobra Rhodes first started pulling as a teenager in very early 80s and by the end of the decade he has established himself as one of the most dominant 165 pound pullers in the world. Between 1980s and early 90s he won five WAF senior division world titles with his right arm, even winning the overall title at WAF world championship in 1992 and making to the finals on two other occasions. He also won several sports top pro tournaments in 90s including Super Brass de Fer 1991, Yukon Jack Nationals 1992, the Forza Tropical and the main event in 1998 and the Arnold Classic three years in a row between 1998 and 2000. In 1999, he competed in a professional cash tournament in British Columbia with Engin Terzi, entered all five right hand weight classes and won them all. When we talk about guys who are super dominant in their weight and they can climb five classes up, that's Cobra Rhodes. Now there is no overall championship at the WAF Worlds, but when there was, that means when he won I think 75 or 70 kilo WAF World title, he still beat every other champion, every other world champion. You need to understand that that's not a small feat to achieve for 75 or 70 kilo puller. Number four, Hajimurat Zuluyev, 14 votes. The first decade of 21st century saw emergence of Russian teen sensation, Hajimurat Zuluyev. Coming from a family of arm wrestling champions, his right arm was unbelievably strong for his weight. After briefly dabbling in the junior division at the start of 2000s, he quickly started racking up European and world titles in senior division. During the 2010s, he won more senior division of world titles than any other man. Making this all more impressive is the fact that they were all won with the same arm. In total, he has won 14 senior division of world titles with his right arm in five different weight classes from 70 up to 90 kilo. He dominated his weight class of professional events he entered as well. He won 80 kilo class at A1 Russian Open every time the class was offered. He won Zloty Tour every time he went in three different weight classes. And he won absolute right hand division at the prestigious Lotoshino event in Russia at least twice. Hajimur Zuluyev is another athlete that people keep overlooking. They, they see as soon as you start slipping, they're like, oh, you're done and you never were that good. And the year he performed not so good uh, at World Championships in Hungary, everyone's like, ah, he's done. And he came back and he won. He won two more titles. It's so hard to be on top and to stay there. 14 world titles with right arm. Hajimurud Zuluyev is like he deserves to be right here on the fourth place on the list comparing to the guys that are top three. Svetan Geshevsky, 16 votes. Bulgaria Svetan Geshevsky was dominant force in a right hand 75 kilo class in the late 1990s and early 2000s. He won at least eight right arm titles at European Championship between 1996 and 2005 and won an incredible five world titles in a row. He also proved he was best in other big events, including at Zloty Tour 2001, 
where he won 73 kilo title. And in Las Vegas at the Ultimate Armistice Tournaments in 2005-2006 when he won a pair of 80 kilo titles. If you're from Bulgaria, you know who the man is. You know who is the legend of Bulgarian arm wrestling. If you've been around at the time when Svetan was at his top, you will talk legends. Svetan is still competing. I think he was in last Europeans and Worlds. And if you have a first round match versus him, you know it's gonna be a tough one. He still has amazing top roll. He has not that much side pressure, but it's very hard to beat him. You can Google matches from 75 and 80 kilo classes with Svetan and you will see magic. So only two guys on the list received 19 votes from 19 people. Number two, Engin Terzi, 19 votes. Turkey's Engin Terzi longevity at or near the very top of the sport with both arms is amazing. He has won 14 WAF Senior Division World Titles, with a record of 24 years between the first and most recent titles, 1994 and 2018, in classes ranging from 55 up to 75 kilo. He competed in many of the top American professional events in the late 90s and 2000s, where he won multiple main event My Gold Classic, All Niagara Harley Pool, USA National Pro Arm, and World Wrist Wrestling Championship titles in several weight classes. When at his peak in the late 90s and early 2000s, it seemed as though everyone else was competing for second place behind the angry Turk. Neil Pickup makes a joke. If Engin was bigger, everyone would be in trouble. He was so dominant in his class that he could easily, easily beat world champions when he won 55, 60 kilo title and go up to 90 kilos. That's how strong Engin Terzi was. And this is the means of pound for pound. He was sometimes twice as small as the guys he faced normally. And we're not even getting in super heavyweights. We're getting in 100 and 110 kilo guys. And he still could beat them. Engin is a master of arm wrestling one of the most knowledgeable guys in the sport and one of the best arm wrestlers you have or will ever see. Number one, this is uh, like, I see no debate here, 19 votes, John Berzank. American John Berzank is recognized as a top puller of 1980s, top puller of 1990s, top puller of 2000s and among the best pullers of 2010s. He has won virtually every professional major title there was to win in a sport during his 35-year career. He often pulled his own weight class and every class above his right arm and usually coupled with his left. He defeated almost all of the top super heavyweights during his career, despite typically weighing under 100 kilos. His dominance was recognized in 2000 Guinness Book of World Records, where he was named the greatest arm wrestler of all time. I don't think I have to comment on John Berzank. You know who he is. You can watch two other videos. Uh, I'll post a link in the description where I made about John. He, without a doubt, the greatest arm wrestler who ever lived. Best pound for pound arm wrestler ever. Funny thing that most of the guys are still active or have been active in the past three years. Many of them you don't know because they're very private. They win their tournaments and head home. Most of them don't communicate in English, so it's very hard to show them to the bigger audiences. And most of their glorious arm wrestling footages are forever lost, as they arm wrestle way before cell phone era. We see dominant arm wrestlers of today, and we would say they're in the same realm as these athletes on the list. But most important part of pound for pound lists is longevity. After 5, 10 years, lists might look completely different but only time will tell. Hope you enjoyed the video, click the like, subscribe to the channel, stay strong and love arm wrestling.